Hi everybody, my name is Matt Stigler, Pro Football Art Performance Coach, and today I'm going to take you through the seven absolute worst exercises for footballers if you want to make it to the professional level. Now, I'll give you the general spiel. Obviously, I don't have the fanciest setup here. I don't have the fanciest editing. This is all going to be one take, so you're going to get this nice and raw and uncut. But what I do have, in spite of those things, is almost 10 years worth of experience working with footballers just like you to get them to the highest level, whether that is in terms of their speed training, their power, their strength, their fitness, their athleticism, whatever they need. I have almost a decade worth of experience helping people just like you get there. So let's get into it. I have a list of seven exercises right here that we're gonna break down that you should absolutely never do. And I know that all these social media videos always say these things, but make sure to stay until the very end because I am telling you without a doubt that number one is by far the most important, okay? So the one I'm gonna finish on is the absolute most important exercise that you need to know you need to make sure that you avoid doing it, okay? So number one, or I guess number seven, is going to be any quick feet exercise without a ball. So the seventh worst exercise that any footballer can do is any quick exercise, any quick feet exercise without a ball, okay? And the reason for that is because people think quick feet is what makes people faster or to be able to change direction quicker or get them better agility, but that's not the case. To be able to have those three things, you need to be able to move your center of gravity from side to side. So these quick feet exercises that people do with a ladder where they're in and out with the feet and their actual hips and the rib cage don't go side to side little to at all, that exercise is not going to make you any faster. Now, if you're doing a quick feet exercise with the ball to maybe work on your technical work, that's a whole different story because you do need to be able to manipulate your feet so that you can change the position of the ball and you don't necessarily need to be moving your hips side to side when doing that. But if you are working on actually being able to explode past the defender or actually work on projecting yourself forward to be as fast as possible, the quick feet exercises aren't it. What you should be doing instead are things like ground reactive plyometrics and other exercises that help you put force into the ground, okay? So that is number seven. Number six, we're gonna go with any BOSU ball exercises. And I know I've already probably upset a few people by just saying this, but the reason for this is because of specificity. So I know people always make the argument of, oh, but if I can balance on this unstable surface, if I can balance on this BOSU ball, then I can balance on anything I see on the pitch. And I get the logic, and it's not that I think BOSU ball training is necessarily super detrimental to your training, but instead of training on a surface that we're never going to see on the pitch, why don't we just challenge our balance and our stability in more difficult ways on the actual surface we see on the pitch, right? So, you know, like obviously if you're a relatively high level athlete, you can probably stand on one leg for a very long period of time, okay? But can you do that while you have a partner who's slightly nudging you? Or can you jump up into the air and have someone slightly bump into you and then still land and maintain your balance and stability? These are different ways that we can actually challenge your ability to maintain balance on the pitch while actually having you practice on the surface that you're going to see in the pitch and have you practicing things that are actually going to happen to you while you are playing your matches, okay? So I just think there's a better way we can go about it. It's not necessarily that BOSU balls are dangerous or even detrimental. Like, you'd be fine getting away with that, but to me, it's like, why aren't we doing the thing that is going to benefit us the most? Why aren't we doing the best thing so that we can have the best performance and athleticism out there, right? So... That is my take on bosu balls, all right? So we're going number five. Number five is going to be ankle pogos. And I've made a lot of videos on this lately. I think ankle pogos are a very good exercise if you are literally just getting into plyometrics or if you're doing them as a warm up. But otherwise you can see like these videos on social media, people have plyometric routines and almost every single one has ankle pogos. You can even see it on the guy's face when they're doing it. Like they're just like so uninterested. It's so not difficult. They're almost look bored. So why don't we actually create something that's going to challenge the body, challenge us and meet us where we're at in terms of athleticism. So you can do things like just simply adding some weight to the plyometric. 
You can do single leg. You can do it in multiple planes of motion. You can do it on top of a short box and then do um, just jump up and down from a single leg ankle pogo in that variation. There's so many different ways that you can go about this and make it so that you are actually challenging yourself while doing the ankle pogo instead of just doing something completely mindlessly that is probably just a bit too easy for you and the level of athleticism that you have, okay? So number four, we're rolling along here. Number four is going to be banded side steps. So I know that this one is probably going to piss off everybody, but banded side steps. So I often see footballers doing these during their warmups and everything. And the main problem with them is I have so many footballers come to me complaining about tight hips. And then they do these banded side steps, which number one is a concentric only exercise. So what I mean by that is it is only working the hips in a concentric way, which is a surefire way to make hips just way stiffer than they, than they already are. So you're doing this exercise as a warm up. They may be a little bit more loose short term because you have finally got some blood into the muscle. But long term, after doing that for days and weeks and even years, you are going to have more stiff hips by doing that. And okay, let's say you do get some short term mobility benefits. Why don't we just do something that challenges the muscle in a eccentric and concentric fashion, just like simply doing a single leg glute bridge. You, no equipment will be required. You will warm up the hips, you'll warm up the glutes, you'll get the frontal plane work, you'll also get the sagittal plane work. I see no reason why not to do that type of exercise instead of these banded hip warm-ups. In addition to that, you could just do some actual like A skips and some acceleration complexes because if you've ever done those for a prolonged period of time and you've done those for, you know, five minutes before your routine, your hips should be pretty pretty toasty at that point. So you can easily do that while working on your running mechanics and still maintain your ability to maintain mobile hips. Okay. So I just think there's better options. Again, it's not the end of the world for that one, but to me, I think there's a lot better options out there. Number three, another one that people don't like, any type of sand workout. Now, I think the sand workout is way worse than the BOSU ball, despite the fact it's for a similar reason. The number one thing that we need to focus on is making sure that we're training on the same surface that we are going to see on the pitch during our trainings, etc. Okay? And... The bigger difference with sand versus the BOSU ball is when you are running on sand, the sand is obviously conforming to your foot. It's conforming to your body. So you go down, when your foot hits sand, the sand absorbs it and distributes around the foot. What that does is that increases your ground contact time. What that then does is that changes the way that the connective tissues and the tendons actually react to the ground, okay? So when you're running in sand, you may notice that it's really difficult and your legs are probably burning. The reason for that is because you're slowing everything down and your muscles are actually working harder to perform the run. And then, so you're training, you're shifting the emphasis of training onto these different tissues, onto these muscles that probably aren't going to be working as much when you are running on the pitch because you have a stiffer surface that you're running on you have quicker ground contact times so on the sand you're training more muscles and on the pitch you're training more connective tissues and tendons so you're not really preparing yourself as well as you could be for what we see on the pitch you're going to be running slower because you are on the sand and you may even be increasing your risk of injury the only times that sand workouts in my mind are okay is one if you're just like juggling a soccer ball, doing some technical work and having fun, like, of course, go do that. That's not going to lead to any type of injuries on the pitch, obviously. And number two, if you are doing some type of recovery workout, if you've already done a lot of work where you are doing uh, your conditioning or your speed or your technical work on the pitch, you can go to the sand because that force absorption, that increased cushion that you do get from the sand can help those tendons and connective tissues relax a little bit which can be good if you want to just get some extra work in. Okay, so there are applications to doing sand training, which is probably why it's not even higher on the list, but sand training overall, it's not gonna be something that you wanna make a main part of your training for football, okay? Number two, and probably my least favorite, honestly, of all these is going to be battle ropes. And I got in a, not an argument, but someone commented on one of my social media posts the other day 
saying all these different things that battle ropes can do like oh it's conditioning it's power it's mental toughness it's all these different things and you can make that argument about almost any exercise but the fact that i can name hundreds of exercises that do all of those things better than battle ropes do is probably a bad sign okay so conditioning it's a upper body exercise which is again only concentric and it's a very small range of motion there's really almost i can't think of a worse conditioning exercise for football if i'm being completely honest like it's just it's just not a good exercise because what about the upper body concentric only short range of motion translates at all to any type of conditioning that you see on a football pitch where you are doing multi-directional work with your legs big ranges of motion decelerating eccentrically orienting all the time like there's just not much that doesn't translate uh there's not much that translates worse than battle ropes do okay and then when we're talking about power it just doesn't train power at all i mean you're doing like hundreds of reps if you really want to train for the true definition of power you're probably looking at six reps max and you're looking at way heavier loads than that so that's absolutely not the case then people make the case for core or ab training it's like yeah barely like again there's infinitely better exercises like copenhagen's hollow holds bear holds all these different things that train abs way better than that ever will so it's just one of those things looks really cool in a training montage i'm sure you've seen a lot of your favorite pro football pro footballers do those exercises but it's just something that is it's a waste of time it's not going to lead to any serious injuries but i can't think of a bigger waste of time exercise than that if i'm being completely honest so and number one the most important one of the entire day the number one worst exercise you can do as a footballer is going to be doing nothing and the reason i say this is because i'm sure for most people I've probably mentioned things that you do in your own training and I've probably given you reasons that you shouldn't do these things and maybe you believe them, maybe you don't, whatever. I personally have found because I follow sports performance coaches all over the place and they've said things, you know, that I probably would disagree with and they've influenced my training and I've kind of found that, you know, okay, maybe what they said makes sense logically but it did not work for me as it did on their social media post or for their client, okay? So it's really just a way of me saying, if you do any of these things and they truly make you feel better and you feel like they're improving your performance, then don't let me be the one to tell you not to do them. And don't let anybody be the one to tell you not to do them. Because if you found something that works for you, like. I found so many things that just don't make sense logically that have worked well for me objectively and I've measured it and it has worked well for me. So why am I going to let someone's Instagram post influence my type of training, right? There's no reason to do that. Now, if you've done some of this training, like maybe you've done battle ropes before and maybe you've already been a little bit suspicious about what they actually benefit you and uh, if they actually benefit you on the pitch and then you've heard my reasonings and then you're like oh yeah that does make sense i'm actually gonna cut these like yay perfectly fine that's great but don't let me be the one to stop you from doing something that you know or you really feel works well for you on the pitch okay and don't let anybody tell you that even if it doesn't make sense logically if you think it works for you keep it up and just keep working don't be the guy that ends up doing nothing because there's a million social media posts out there that give you a million different opinions okay so i hope this was helpful everybody again Hopefully you guys don't hate me after, uh, after I just trashed seven very common things that I see a lot of footballers do on social media. But if you like this video, if you got anything from it, please subscribe, like the video, share it with a friend, do whatever you can so you can please support and then maybe I can continue to grow this channel and maybe I can even do two to three takes of a video every now and then or I can get some fancier video editing for you guys. So thanks again. I will be releasing these videos every week, so make sure to be on the lookout.